After back-to-back -to -back top 10 wins against Ohio State and Iowa, Michigan and Jawan Howard are rolling. They're ranked in the top 10 nationally in both offensive and defensive efficiency, and they're 12-1 in a league where the next best team has four losses. This year's Michigan offense is all about balance. They have a speedy point guard, a huge back-to-the-basket big, and athletic wings. Juwan Howard's system is full of diversity as well. He has a very large playbook. They run plays for ball screens, for post-ups, even some five out with a big initiating out at the top of the key. But really, regardless of what they're running, ball movement is what fuels the Wolverines. Franz Wagner, Mike Smith, all the way down the roster, all share the ball at an elite level, quickly converting small advantages into open shots. In this video, we'll deep dive into that Michigan offense, including Jawan Howard's playbook, the go and then catch concept used by several different players, the pick and roll combination of Mike Smith and Hunter Dickinson, what happened in Michigan's only loss of the season to Minnesota, and at the very end of the video, I pick my three absolute favorite Michigan possessions that really highlight their ball ball movement and style of play. Last week on the channel, I broke down one of the best defenses in the country. Please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to get all of our upcoming videos as we head into the best month of the year. In early offense, Michigan has several different ways to get quickly into a ball screen. One of them is pistol, which has been a staple in the NBA for many years. Michigan's point guard will attack the cleared outside towards the baseline, opening up the roll to the basket. They also use dribble handoffs where the bottom guard lifts up to then come off of a spread ball screen. Watch how the weak side sets a flare screen while that ball screen is occurring. That's our very first example of ball movement and player movement creating an open look for Michigan, and we'll see plenty more of that. They also have their through series where Mike Smith passes and then cuts to the weak side. In this case, again, triggering another ball screen towards the baseline. In all three of these cases, it's all about playing with pace early in the possession in hopes of creating a quick advantage situation. Smith is Michigan's fastest and shiftiest player. With a full head of steam, he's tough to stay in front of. Prior to transferring to Michigan, he was one of the highest usage scorers in the country at Columbia, but he's transitioned extremely well to a more pass-first point guard with the Wolverines. These are the Big Ten players that use the most ball screens per game. Smith is shooting on only 34% of his ball screens, meaning he passes to a teammate on the other 66%. That's by far the highest rate of anyone on the list. On the other hand, his passing rate at Columbia was just 52%. That higher rate this season is a testament to Michigan's balance and ball movement. As a ball screen passer, Smith looks to either hit the corner shake early in the screen, or he also likes to wait for the little dump off pass to the roll later on the drive. Smith is also very crafty at rejecting screens and driving the other way, so that sets up plays like the next one. Smith takes his man towards the baseline with the defender fighting to cut him off. Now by the time the ball screen occurs, because of that initial setup, the defense is late and the ball is well below the three point line, almost at the elbow. With Hunter Dickinson's size, he's now just a step away from the dunk. Because of the combination of Smith's ability to set his man up and lower the level of the screen, plus Dickinson's size and great finishing ability, the two of them form a very efficient pick and roll duo, especially when that ball screen gets set near the elbow. And now that brings us to Hunter Dickinson. The seven foot one freshman makes even a league that's full of big men like the Big Ten look comparatively tiny. This play against Ohio State was like when a really tall kid in a middle school game keeps getting his own rebound over and over again. Dickinson uses that size not only on the glass, but in the post. He's shooting 71% on post ups this season. That ranks him second in the entire NCAA. 
Watch here how Minnesota switches the ball screen. It forces a big guy to guard Smith's quickness and a guard to deal with Dickinson's size. They try to switch back on the flight of the pass, but you can't give Dickinson deep post position. So naturally, Dickinson draws a lot of double teams. And then in turn, that just showcases the Michigan ball move. Here they whip the ball around the horn for a corner three. Isaiah Livers is often the designated cutter when Dickinson gets doubled. His cuts can suck in the defense to open up the skip pass, and he's also been good at just stopping right in his tracks on the cut and finding the open shooter himself. It's fun to watch just how quickly Michigan can convert a double team into an open shot. Here, Maryland isn't even done turning around yet to double, and the ball is already being sent around the horn. Because all four Michigan perimeter players can attack a closeout, this innocent little double team turns into an ankle breaker in a matter of seconds. Same thing here, this time with Eli Brooks attacking the closeout. With Michigan's great ball movement and spacing, you'd think they'd be a team that shoots plenty of threes, but only 35% of their shots are from behind the arc this season. That's the lowest three-point volume for a Michigan team since 2013. Interestingly, they went all the way to the national championship that season, led by Big Ten Player of the Year Trey Burke. The lower three-point volume all starts with how Michigan players receive a pass. Instead of catching to shoot, Eli Brooks, Franz Wagner, and Sean D. Brown often catch the ball on the move. They they especially use that concept when the corner guy is shaking up during a ball screen. Brooks has an especially unique tendency. He likes to catch on the move and take the first dribble with his left hand, even though it's the inside hand. The go and then catch philosophy has pros and cons like anything else. Wagner's reluctance to just shoot the three can be a bit counterproductive at times. Like if he passes up an in-rhythm catch-and-shoot opportunity, only to then wind up with a slightly more difficult and a little less in-rhythm three a second later. But to be fair, Juwan Howard does do a great job of playing towards Wagner's strengths. For example, on baseline out-of-bounds plays, Michigan loves to send Wagner underneath the hoop. As soon as the ball gets inbounded, he'll then cut right up the gut of the lane to the foul line, using his long strides to immediately get downhill and put pressure on the defense. It's hard for that opponent to chase him up the gut and then stay in front of him on the drive. Michigan also uses this concept on their Spain ball screen set. Dickinson sets a ball screen and then rolls to the hoop while Wagner is setting a back screen on Dickinson's man. Ideally, that action will free up Dickinson on the roll. Michigan has scored that way a few times this season. But if not, Wagner then pops right out in that same free throw line area to again attack downhill. It's been one of the most successful sets I've seen from any team this season, in large part because it's a perfect fit for Michigan's personnel. Here's an even more sophisticated set designed for Wagner. He starts by curling off the stagger screen, and then after a bunch of misdirection action, Davis goes and gets him for another cut right up the gut. Michigan's worst game of the season came at Minnesota, an 18-point loss back in January. During that game, they turned the ball over on 28% of their possessions, the highest turnover rate in a game for the Michigan offense since all the way back in 2011. Some of those turnovers were just unforced errors, but they did really struggle on post-entry passes, either just giving the ball away when trying to feed Dickinson or getting it to him in a bad spot on the floor. Dickinson finished the game with just five shot attempts. But regardless, when things are rolling for Michigan, this is one of the very best offenses in the country. To end this, here are my three favorite possessions from them this season that all showcase how their ball movement becomes a nightmare for the defense to cover. This play starts out with a ghost screen from Livers that Purdue takes away. But after the pass, it's Brooks's turn to ghost into the empty corner, this time creating a small advantage on the defense. Brooks drives baseline and makes the drift pass to the corner. John's shot fakes, and now he drives baseline, coming to a two-foot jump stop. And all of that frees up the guy who started the whole sequence of motion in the first place for a three. 
Next, we have a play that technically leads to a miss, but it's too good not to include. Brooks is in the middle of the paint as Wagner looks to drive. So on that drive, Brooks relocates to the corner. Now the roles are reversed. Brooks is looking to drive and Wagner is in the paint. So it's Wagner's turn to relocate. On that pass, we're right back to where we started and I bet you can already guess what happens next. Wagner drives again, Brooks relocates again, and the open three is created. It's just two players understanding spacing, reading the floor, and putting stress on the defense. Final play, and notice how there's eight seconds left in the half. For most teams in this situation, this would probably just be an isolation or a high ball screen for the point guard, often leading to a tough jump shot. But instead of iso ball, Michigan sprints into their regular offense. Brooks hands the ball off to Wagner. Wagner uses the ball screen and finds Brooks shaking up from the corner, just like we saw earlier. And in just eight seconds, Michigan's movement generates a wide open layup at the buzzer. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can help out the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you're interested in more on Michigan, I'll be putting three extra sets that they run that I didn't show in this video in our Hoop Vision weekly newsletter. The link to that is in the description. Stay tuned for more coming in the newsletter and on the channel as we head into March Madness. Fran, what did uh, Wagner do so well that, that kind of allowed him to get away from you guys? He was driving the ball quite a bit. 